So I want to talk about the alteration of olivine and uh, plagioclase um, because they both create common alteration mineral products as in clays and oxides. So I'd like to talk about uh, plagioclase weathering first. So we have calcium, aluminum, silica, and oxygen, and it reacts with acidity to form calcium ions and the clay mineral kaolinite, which has Cl2Si2O5 OH4. So I need to balance this. So I have my calcium's okay, my aluminum's okay, silica's okay. I have nine oxygens on this side and only eight on this side. So I need to add a water. And I have two charges on this side and only one on this side. Okay, so now and now we have four protons. Okay. So basically what this reaction shows is that plagioclase. plus acidity forms calcium ions plus kaolinite easily. And so when you react the plagioclase here, it, it changes the pH of the water and it produces uh, these kaolinite clays. And so there's this confusion or a mixture between clay size grains and clay mineralogy grains because they were named before um, a, a, a scientist could actually uh, tell the mineral structure from the grain size. But one of the interesting things about this is, is these are clay sized in addition to be and being clay minerals. And so here, this is this the resulting product is almost always um, produces a lot of suspended sediment. So we can also weather olivine, and the acidity uh, helps with that as well. And the iron, in the presence of acidity, will dissociate with the silica, and you get two iron reduced iron. And then uh, the silica can also be in solution if it has enough prot protons. You have to basically replace the, the four charges of the ions with, with the protons here. Okay, and so we need uh, four protons. So I have my charges balanced and I have my elements balanced here. Okay. So this iron will react uh, with uh, oxygen. So um, I'm going to use four of them to balance out the equation. Um, and the reason for that is each one of the irons goes from 2 plus to 3 plus. And so if we have four electrons, uh, we, can need, we can use one oxygen here. And then we're going to need some water. Uh, to provide uh, some, some extra oxygen. Mm -hmm. And the iron will oxidize to an iron oxyhydroxide, but I'm just going to use uh, hematite here because it's a nice uh, mineral uh, phase. It's a little um, cleaner. And so this iron is in the 3 plus state. Okay, and so we actually, there are two of them in each one, so I need a two here. Yeah. And then that means that I have a three, or six oxygen. So I have two here, and so I need four more here to get six oxygen. And that leaves me with um, eight protons. And, um, and I also need something to, uh, to, to balance the charge. And so we end up 
with eight protons here. So we are charge balanced, we're oxidative state balanced, and we're element balanced. So one of the things that happens that's really interesting in this process is that when you oxidize the iron, you produce acidity. Uh, some of you might have heard about the problems with acid mine drainage. Um, that occurs when you expose iron 2 plus to water and oxygen at Earth's surface and it oxidizes uh, to produce all these protons. If we look at the reaction uh, of the olivine as a whole, this first part of the olivine weathering consumes protons and the second part produces them. Right? So we can combine these two equations to, to have both the dissolution of olivine and the oxidation of iron. So I'm going to multiply this equation times 2. So I have 2 olivines, 8 protons, uh, 4 uh, irons and uh, two uh, hydrated silica. Okay. When I add these two equations uh, together, we basically now have eight protons and eight protons, so we can get rid of those two. We have four irons and four irons, so we can get rid of those two. And everything else stays the same. So we end up with two olivines uh, and on this side we need a plus an oxygen plus four water molecules and then we have our products on the other side. Uh, this cancelled out with this. We have two hydrosilicas and two hematites. Okay. So basically our olivine, when it's exposed to water and oxygen, goes into hydrated silica and hematite. Now again, this hematite is not a clay mineral, but it's often clay-sized. So it ends up as in, in uh, suspension in the water. And this silica um, often goes into clay minerals. But it requires other uh, mineral reactions to actually form these minerals. Because the clay minerals all have aluminum in them, and olivine doesn't have that aluminum. It's also possible that this could form microcrystalline quartz uh, or chert or um, hydrosilica, like opal is a hydrosilica mineral. Okay. So when you have pyroxenes and amphiboles, uh, they also release oxides if you have oxygen present and silica and aluminum to form these alteration products. So in, in summary, uh, the, the composition of sediment uh, consists of uh, lithic class of the original host rock if they haven't had time to alter. The least reactive minerals, um, quartz in particular, is uh, most common. Um, and then alteration and weathering products, and those are mostly uh, clay minerals and oxides. If you have very little chemical weathering, you can have some of these more reactive minerals present. And, um, but through time, with alteration and exposure to water and oxygen, they will disappear. So the composition of the sediment can give you a really interesting history about the protolith of the, the rock that formed the sediment, uh, the weathering processes, and how long and, and what types of weathering they've experienced. Thanks for watching.